Amazon Automotive Chairman, CEO David Mystery, along with uh, Christian Atter, a law managing partner, Wes Christian, uh, uh, who's been on our show before. And David, uh, thanks for joining the show. For folks who aren't familiar with it and say, well, why would we be talking about a 60 cent stock? I do want to point out your average daily volume is 274 million, 274 million shares a day. You've got quite a huge uh, following of, of retail investors who have fallen in love with your stock. Many of them are disappointed. I want to talk to you about a series of things, but let's begin first and foremost with this lawsuit that you have against these brokerage firms. What are you alleging here? Well, we've sent a loud and uh, clear message uh, to the world that we're not going to stand by and allow illegal short selling of our stock and hopefully we can be the change that uh, the, you know makes things uh, different here and gets people to pay attention to what's going on uh, with specifically with mall and and all the other uh, companies out there that have to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis uh, West Christian uh, who is quarterbacking this uh, entire lawsuit could uh, elaborate right. as to the merits of, of the lawsuit Wes, without, without uh, adjudicating it, the whole thing here, uh, of course, I know that you've helped the, these sort of situations before. Uh, are you alleging that, that these firms are doing it or that they're just simply allowing it to happen? No, Charles. Well, first, Charles, thank you for having me back again, buddy. We appreciate it. I know this is a passionate subject for you, too. Uh, what, what we're alleging, simple version, is the defendants in this case uh, illegally violated Rule 15C33, which is the customer protection rule, as well as uh, Rule 14B1, both of which stem out of them either short selling shares Ill illegally by not having a proper borrow. Why? Because they were using customers' accounts, mm -hmm. which violates Rule 15C33, or and in doing so, uh, and knowing that there's going to be shares coming and these conversions that happened. Right. And then when those conversions happen, they use those shares to repay their customers' account shares. Or similarly, they illegally lent those shares to someone else that did short selling. What we do know, Charles, just, just to give you some basic optics, 65 million shares failed to deliver in June of 2023. We have verified from the, the brokers, the defendants in this case, Charles, own records that they sent to Broadridge that they had 19 million to 54 million shares of imbalances. Right. What that means is they reported more shares in the, in, that they had beneficially owned than they had at the DTC. That's what we call imbalances. Right. Right. Okay. Once those are ongoing and systemic, then it, it's, it's signs of illegal short selling. All right. Uh, by the way, we reached out to all of these firms. Schwab got back to us. I'll read their statement. This lawsuit spends an outlandish conspiracy theory that blames Schwab for the performance of Mellon stock, but the complaint is long on salacious allegations and short on truth. The truth is that Schwab always acted professionally, legally, and ethically, ethically uh, in this manner. Uh, David, let me go back to now to the company. Uh, a lot of a lot of concerns about your salary, uh, the losses. I went through the last quarter. One thing that jumped out at me on uh, G, uh, general and administrative spending, $31 million. Uh, just as a business itself, uh, you know, why are you spending $31 million on, on SG&A costs and things like that? Well, we're a growing business. Um, obviously, this is a space where it's very expensive to get a vehicle. In yeah, the that's the research and, and development side. I got you, but the the, the general and an administrative costs to me are just outlandish. Uh, and, and particularly, here's the thing: people are saying you've taken a lot of money, you have paid yourself a lot of money, and 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 this kind of spending it just doesn't make sense for a small company like yours. Well, in relation to um, let's say uh, compensation, whatever compensation that was um, uh, awarded. Uh, me and my employment contract, our uh, compensation pursuant to awards um, were given. And um... David, can you hear me? Right. All right. You're, 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 you're fading out and I've got 20 seconds. One last thing, these stock splits. OK, I read I read your firm. What the firm is saying is that these stock splits were done to uh, stay compliant with NASDAQ, with the uh, NASDAQ listings. But every time you split your stock, it becomes fodder for the shorts. I mean, we go one for 25 and then one for authorized one for 100 to do one for nine. 
We know that the shorts pounce. So, folks, it looks like we're having some audio issues with David. We're running out of time. We'll pick this up again. We want to go over these stock splits, which to me are just nuts. They're nuts. All you're doing is helping the shorts. We'll also talk about the role of dark pools because it's an, it really seems nefarious to me. Right now, I'll hand it over to Liz Clayman. Uh, Buffett does never, never splits the stock. Yeah. Doesn't pay a dividend. <laughs> That's why it's six figures to buy a single share. Charles, thank you very much.